And just to bring home this point, I want to play the, what is it, about six minutes long? It's five minutes and 32 seconds. This is the testimony that we heard yesterday uh, in this um, Armed Services Committee hearing. Traveling from Yemen to join us today. I'm looking forward to your testimony. Please proceed. Thank you, Chairman Durbin and Ranking Member Cruz for inviting me here today. My name, as you mentioned, is Farah al-Muslimi, and I am from Musab, a remote village mountain in, in, in Yemen. Just six days ago, my village was struck by an American drone in an attack that terrified the region's poor farmers. Wasab is my village, but America has helped me grow up and become what I am today. I come from a family that lives off the fruit, vegetables, and livestock we raise in our farms. My father's income rarely exceeded $200. He learned, he learned to read late in his life, and my mother never did. My life, however, has been different. I am who I am today because the U.S. State Department supported my education. I spent a year living with an American family and attended an American high school. That was one of the best years of my life. I learned about American culture, managed the school basketball team, and participated in a trick or treat in Halloween. But the most exceptional is an experience was coming, uh, the most exceptional experience was coming to know someone who ended up being like a father to me. He was a member of the U.S. Air Force. Most of my years, most of my year was spent with him and his family. He came to the mosque with me and I went to church with him and he became my best friend in America. I went to the U.S. as an ambassador for Yemen and I came back to Yemen as an ambassador of the U.S. I could never have imagined that the same hand that changed my life and took it from miserable to promising one would also draw in my village. My understanding is that a man named, Ham named Hamid al-Radami was the target of a drone strike. Many people in Wisab know al-Radami and the Yemeni government could easily have found and arrested him. Al-Radami was a well-known to government officials and even to local government, and even local government could have captured him if the U.S. had told them to do so. In the past, what Wasab's villagers knew of the U.S. was based on my stories about my wonderful experiences here. The friendships and values I experienced and described to the villagers helped them understand the America that I know and that I love. Now, however, when they think of America, they think of the terror they feel from the drones that hover over their heads, ready to fire missiles at any time. What the violent militants had previously failed to achieve, one drone strike accomplished in an instant. There is now an intense anger against America in Wasab. This is not an isolated instance. The drone strikes are the face of America to many Yemenis. I have spoken to many victims of U.S. drone strikes like a mother in Jar who had to identify her, her innocent 18 years old son's body through a video in a stranger's cell phone. Or the father in Shakra who held his four and six years old children as they died in his arms. Recently in Aden, I spoke with one of the tribal leaders present in 2009 at the place where the US cruise missiles targeted the village of Al Ma'jala in Lodar, Abyan. More than 40 civilians were killed, including four pregnant women. The tribal leader and others tried to rescue the victims, but the bodies were so decimated that it was impossible to differentiate between those of children, women, and their animals. Some of these innocent people were buried in the same grave as their animals. In my written testimony, I provide a detail about the human cost of this and other drone strikes based on an interviews I have conducted or have been part of. I have a personal experience of fear, of the fear they cause. Late last year, I was in Abyan with an American journalist colleague. Suddenly, I heard the buzz. The local people we were interviewing told us that based on their past experiences, the thing hovering above us was an American drone. My heart sank, I felt helpless. It was the first time that I had truly feared for my life 
or for an American friend's life in Yemen. I couldn't help but think that the drone operator just might be my American friend with whom I had the warmest and deepest relationship had. I was torn between this great country that I love and the drone above my head that could not differentiate between me and some AQIP militants. It was one of the most divisive and difficult feelings I have ever encountered. I felt that way when my village was also droned. Thank you for having this hearing. I believe in America and I deeply believe that when Americans truly know about how much pain and suffering the US air strikes have caused and how much they are harming efforts to win hearts, minds, and grounds in Yemen and hearts and minds of the Yemeni people, they will reject this devastated, devastating targeted killing program. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know how uh, you can hear that um, that testimony and uh, n and claim that in any fashion there is value to this program that we have of 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 waging this war. I mean, I, I it's obviously. Um, I, I just simply don't know how uh, one could argue. You have about as as m uh, the as good of a relationship as you could possibly want. Term uh, in terms of how America is seen um, with this Yemeni. And we are destroying it even for him. Someone so inclined to give this country the benefit of the doubt. And, I mean, imagine those people who have had no experience with that which is good about the, the United States. No experience with that is, which is good about uh, American citizens. You're just subjected to these drone strikes, to, to literally this terror. 